take three. Hi there. Um, today, we are going to talk about straight razors, cutthroat razors. How to shave with it, how to hone it, and how to maintain it. So, I'm going to do a two-part video. I just shaved with it. That'll be the first part is me shaving with it. And I'm very new at this, uh, and you'll see that in there. And I'll explain all that with it. And immediately after, we will re-hone uh, one of these. So I've got this one honed and sharpened. And this is the new one. Uh, they're, well, they're both pretty new, but this one I haven't yet. So, so don't go away. I think that's the important part. Maybe you know how to use one of these, maybe you don't, but you've got to know how to maintain it. And when they're brand new, they need to be rehoned. And I'll, I'll show you all that. So don't go away. And I'll get her all shaved. See, it looks pretty good. Not bad. Got one little nick right there. And uh, you'll see it a little bit better when I'm shaving. And I uh, hope you enjoy the video. All right, let's shave. So welcome to my bathroom. Um, I have only been shaving for a couple of weeks with the razor like this. So I'm not an expert. There's a lot of great videos out there that I learned from with people that are experts, but being new, I, I thought I had a couple of tips that might help. I won't go over everything. I'll, I'll keep this part of the video short. This video I mostly wanted for how to hone a new knife. But so I started out because I couldn't find any of the, uh, of this kind of shaving cream at like Walmart or anywhere. I had to order it ordered off Amazon. So I started out using just regular shaving cream from Walmart and I got this, tried this shaving butter. The shaving butter probably works good with the regular razor, but by itself it didn't work well with this. And this worked okay. Uh, the two worked better. Nick stick, <laughs> very important. You'll need that. <laughs> Hopefully I don't have any blood on this video, but, um, the, so what I ordered is, um, Taylor of old street, old bond street, um, cedarwood shaving cream. So when you put a little bit in your shaving cup or your shaving bowl, this one has dimples in it and, uh, beaver hair, uh, brush and, just whip it up, get get it, get it wet, and whip it up to till it's a cream. Also, you want to get your hair hair wet, and I've done this, pre-done this, but I uh, heat up some water in the microwave for a couple of minutes and get it, you know, pretty hot. And I've cut up an old T-shirt I was going to throw away, just a cotton T-shirt. Put it on there, get yourself, get it all nice and warm and wet. That softens up the hair and opens up the pores of the skin a little bit better. So that's the basic what you need to do. And then put the shaving cream on. Like in there? All right. So by the time I get to the other side, it's pretty dry. It's a bit dry. And I need to add a little bit more and freshen it up, you know, because and because this straight razors, they don't shave real well if they're real dry, if the cream dries out on you. And I imagine I'll get better at that. And probably be able to uh, do it a little bit faster. But right now I'm pretty slow at this. But some of the easiest part to shave, because this is closer to flat, is, is your cheek. So that's a great place to start, you know. And you've got, I don't know what they're called, but you're shaving with different parts of your razor. you got the midpoint, the tip, or, and then the, the, the back end. And so where you're at depends on how you, how you shave. And I hold it three fingers on top and one finger on the, the tang that's sticking out there. And so... If you're shaving, if you're used to shaving with, you know, a, a cartridge or an electric razor, like me, my whole life, this is what I did wrong. So this is the part that I thought that 
I could help you with more than maybe some experts. Um, is, you know, when I'm shaving with a regular razor, I shave a lot harder and a lot longer strokes. So with this, you need to shave short strokes and go light, nice and soft and light, or you'll have a beard burn like you can't imagine. I know, trust me. And the hardest part that I'm still trying to figure out how to do, I grow a lot of hair on my chin and it's round. Trying to shave it well is, is a challenge. That's where I get my nicks. And I mean, cutting the, shaving your throat is kind of scary, but I haven't gotten any nicks on my throat. So I do want to be careful because you don't want it there. It's, you know, that's pretty tender skin. And, but, um, there's a reason they call it a cutthroat razor, right? But, uh, so anyway, we'll, we'll go over it in just short, light strokes and stretch the skin. So I'll start in the middle here. Oh, about, so you don't have a protractor. I'm not bringing a protractor with me. About 30 degrees is what they say. So you don't want it flat. So I went flat and kind of brought it out and feel to where it's starting to grab. To where you can feel it cutting the hair. Can you see? And it's just short. Strokes. And then trip to get to the end, to get close to the ear. Yeah, I can't see my hair and my hands right in the way, but you can feel where you're at. And then you know you use the the end. And learn how to use the different parts of the razor. But it's short and quick. Might have to blow a bit of air out. But keeping it moist, stretching the skin, and light, short strokes seems to be the trick. That's totally the trick. See, I can feel it's drying out already. And so which direction to go? You know, your hair grows down on your cheeks, kind of. So I go with the grain, you know, going down. But my neck, you know, like over here, it grows up and it's down over here. So that's going to vary the direction you need and what's comfortable for you. Um, so well, I just have to try and figure it out, you know, because we, we all have hair growth that's a little bit different. Look around the Adam's apple. I don't have a real pronounced Adam's apple, but it's harder to get to. So, so let's try the chin. This is my biggest challenge. And I think I'm going to put, I'm going to moisten it up a little bit. That helped the most with my chin, is moistening it up. So, when you do this, to stretch your chin, you kind of, for me, I kind of dimple my chin, which isn't a very good idea. So I try not to do that because that leaves valleys in your chin. And you know, I got the, the big old clef, that, the coveted clef <laughs> chin. It's a pain in the butt for shaving. And so I try not to wrinkle my chin when I stretch it. Oh, and right there where your lip goes down and your chin comes out, at least mine does, that was a spot where I got myself pretty easily.
We didn't see. Still hot water. They use warm water for everything. You see, I need practice on, on how to do my chin. I can't get it very well. And pay attention how it feels. Is it grabbing? You know, get closer, get a little bit of farther out. You can feel what it's doing. And make funny faces in the mirror. <laughs> right? Why not? <laughs> So it's dry, so I'll Are you really right handed or do you want to shave with your left hand? I'm trying to shave with my left hand on this side. You see that took it off pretty nice. And I hadn't shaved for a couple days, so this it's pretty We might have to go over it a couple times. Well, one pass pretty well takes it off, takes it close, and you're not going to get a super close shave, but with my cartridge razor, I have to go over it a couple times too. Just rinse it off, right? And I do need the next stick a little bit right there somewhere. You can feel it when you get it. <laughs> you get it in the right place. Dude, got one right there. But I think we did pretty good. See? Not bad. I don't know how well I showed my beard beforehand. So then, for finishing up, I'm sure they have different things for healing your skin. I made my own. Uh, it's made with comfrey and um, shea butter, emo oil, and um, cedarwood oil, and things like that. Comfrey, if you don't know, is really healing. But my opinion, my opinion, I know FDA hasn't said, only drugs approved by the FDA heal. So, or cure, I guess is the right word. But um, it works well for me. Um, so that's what I spread on there to kind of... Like an aftershave, but you know, you'll have to do your own research and see what you like for that. Watch the rest of the video, and we'll sharpen up this one here. Okay, how was that? Pretty painless, I hope. <laughs> it was not, not too pain, it was not too painful for me. Hopefully, not too painful for you either. Um, so I used, um, so I got my reading glasses. Taylor of Old Bond Street Cedar Wood Shaving Cream. Taylor of Old Bond Street Cedar Wood Shaving Cream. That's a mouthful for me. And um, I didn't show you very well in the video, sorry. But this is the shaving cup with the Badger Hair shaving brush. And it came with uh, some shaving soap. I haven't used that yet, so I don't know if it's going to use it. Feels, feels like it'll probably work all right. Um, but to use this stuff and it's just a cream you know it's just a little white cream you, I just took a little bit on my finger rubbed it down in there got this wet shook the egg cracks off and just whipped it around till it was creamy and you don't need very much I mean I just had a little bit in the bottom and that was and what was plugged into here and that was plenty as you guys saw for me to shave completely covering and, and even going over it you know to to rehydrate it and and then going over it again to reshave completely again. So you don't need very much. So that little that little container full should last for a really long time. Um, 
We'll find out. The, I mean, size of an almond? You know what? It's really all you need. And so why do we have to rehone our, our knives? When I bought both of these, bought them off of Amazon, this one is, oh, what brand is this? Buckshot knife. And, and this, this seems good quality, don't get me wrong. And this is a Damascus steel blade knife. I don't remember the brand. But um, if you look at the edges, this one's thinner than this one, which I like. So I'm, I'm excited to get this one sharp. But they come sharp like for a knife, not for a razor, you know, at like a 22 to 25 degree angle, where they need to be at like a seven degree angle. Um, you know, there's a big difference between shaving a little bit off your hair with a sharp knife than shaving your face and trying to get a clean shave. A huge difference. And I tried, they said, ready to shave with. I tried with both of these and they are not shave, shave worthy. And so rehoning them, I always consider myself pretty decent with the sharpening stone. You know, I can keep a knife sharp, but boy, rehoning it to razor sharp was a, a I didn't do so well. I really didn't. And I bought, and I'll show you, uh, the nice sharp uh, uh, wet stones and, and we'll go over all that. But what I decided to do was get a um, Ken Onion Work Sharp uh, belt driven grinder. And I'll show you how we do that next and a trick to how to do it. Cause they, I emailed them and asked, can you sharpen uh, one of these? And they said, no, we have to use a whetstone. And I thought about it, did some research and this is what I come up with. So they don't recommend that you sharpen one of these with it, but I'm gonna show you how I did it and, and it worked. And show you the whetstones that I used originally and the trouble I had. I'll try to not ramble as much as I'm doing. All right, so we're gonna rehome the knife now. Let me show you what we're using, what I'm using, pardon me. Uh, I've got a Kent Onion Edition um, knife sharpener, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> it's the grinder, I guess. It's like a grinder belt drive. And uh, it comes with this. This part here is a separate attachment you have to buy separately. So it looks like this in the picture here. This is a box that it comes in and it works fine. That works good. But you need the um, separate attachment, which is this piece here that goes on there. So this sits on there and, and it just turns and comes out pretty simple. Then this goes on and gets in. I struggled getting it on honestly, but they make it look a lot easier in the video, but I did it. So I got it in. And um, then for, so you, you sharpen it right here. And on the inside here, this one here, you have two options. You screw it in there or you have one further, a hole further that you move this out a little further to widen or narrow the gap there. And what that does is um, changes the flex where you're sharpening it. If you have it out wider, you have more flex, which gives you a convex edge. And closer gives you uh, less flex for a straighter edge. When, where we're doing a razor blade, I wanted a nice straighter edge, so I've got the closer option. And then right here, and you just, right here, you move that up or down, we'll change your angle. And then right here, we'll, uh, you turn that as it's running, we'll s straighten out your belt. And um, so that's basically it. I've got a coarse belt on there, and I'm gonna go through all the way down to, and they, they send you a bunch of them. And the, the fine belt is uh, 12,000 grit. So I mean, so it's really fine. Um, but I got, and they don't sell this. I bought it off of Amazon right here. I don't know if that's backwards or not, but super strop. And it comes with two belts like this and uh, a couple of strop, uh, um, stropping stones or stropping, uh, what's it called? Jewelers Rouge, like Jewelers Rouge. So anyway, you, you turn, turn the belt on, you know, and, and, and just run it along there and, and that'll put the, put it on there. And I, I use the, uh, the fine, 
uh, option. They have a coarser one and a finer one. I use the fine option on there and uh, it's really tight on there. I mean, it barely fits on there, but they say that it'll stretch. I've only used it once, so it hasn't stretched for me yet, but uh, there's, there's room for it too, and it fit. My concern with it was where it attaches, you can kind of feel a little bump there. So I'm, you know, I'm gonna pay attention to the direction that I put it. So I want it where the bump is smoothest that way, because it runs, you know, so the bump isn't running straight into the blade and maybe going over it a little smoother. I don't know if that makes any difference, but that's what I'm doing. So I'm going to, oh, look, let me show you. I started with the whetstones and I think I'll use them now that I've got it, you know, once I've got it honed and, and how it's supposed to you know, a basic edge on it. So this one is a thousand grit and 6,000 grit. And then this one is 12,000 grit. And how you're supposed to do this, you uh, you lay your blade with the spine right on, sorry, right on there. You lay it right on there. And that's your angle. I mean, that's your angle with it laying right on there. And you want to have a little bit of pressure towards the blade so you're not wearing out your spine, sharpening your spine, but, but barely, you know, and, and that's your angle. So, and that's why um, Ken Onion or, or Worksharp says they can't, you can't use the grinder on this because it'll grind off your spine. So what I did is, um, and I'll show you how to do this, is put this baby right on there and practice with it, with it off and lift it up just a little bit so the back isn't quite touching. And that's really close to to where you need it, really close. It worked, worked great. I'll reposition my camera so we can get you in tight and and we'll we'll do it and I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. All right, so hopefully I can stay on the screen here. So how, you, how this works, you set your angle like I showed you and you put this down to level to, so that you're level and then you bring it up and, that, and try to keep it in that position and that's how you get your angle properly with, with the work sharp. And you drag it over about halfway, lift it straight up, get your angle again, and do the same thing. Drag it over halfway, lift it straight up. And you're supposed to sharpen the one side until you get a burr. I like to go twice, do the other side twice, do the other side twice, and, and this thing will it started developing a big old foil on the last one. We'll see if that happens with this. Um, so, but what I do, and that's why you can't do that with sharpen this, because it only goes to 10 degrees, and this needs to be further down than that. So what I do, and practice with it off, you know, get your arms in the right position so that you can move it nice and evenly, is put this straight down on here with the with it touching, and lift it just barely off. Get your arms right, get your finger right over here, and drag it across, and keep it at that same angle, lift it off. Get really close, lift it off. Figure out, get yourself positioned right, so that you can do that without screwing up. And what I had a tendency to do was you want to watch the back there to see to watch your angle to watch your you know make sure that you're you're holding steady lifting it just barely off you got to watch that pretty close but I kept watching this end here now you don't want to do that just watch this end here look at this after you got it off of there you know check it out and, and so we'll do that and then we'll just keep moving down in progression so also this has variable speed you want it on the slow speed. i have got it on the slow speed. We're locked in place. And I'm gonna watch that. Oh, 
I went three, so nice clean. We'll go three this way. You can see I was kind of floating around there. That's bad. Don't do that. There's three. We'll try to remember to do two. There's two. You see the edge were a little deeper over here than there, so I need to do better right there. We're doing better on this side. getting better and I'm not putting hardly any pressure on this I'm just floating this thing on there So when I start out, I kind of touch this into it and then lift it off, but just barely lift it off. And you can see I didn't scuff it really. I mean, if I ran it across there the whole time like that, it probably would. I no doubt it would. But uh, just touching it, feels pretty good. Ah, there. Now you can see kind of a double angle there. See, so there's the original angle and there's the new one. Hopefully you guys can see it. Oh. Sorry, I'm sorry. There's a double angle there. Let me rock it back and forth to the light. See, there's one angle, there's another. So I've gotta go, I've gotta go more. It's getting deeper like we want it, but I gotta get this far, the, that angle all the way to the edge. So we got more to go. We got two? Yeah, we do. Okay, can you see that? Let's see if we can get it. The edge, we got a little bit of foil coming up on here. That's what we want. We want to get that foil to where it's rolling over the edge. You can kind of see it in the foil there. So. I'll do just a couple more passes and we'll change the belt. How's my angle doing? Ooh. Still need to work on the back end right there. I need to hit that end a little bit more. There, that's better. 
Okay, we got a nice foil. The feel over there. Now it feels <laughs> kind of weird. It feels kind of soft and squishy, you know? Which that scared me at first when I uh, did the other one. I was like, oh man, that's soft and squishy. I'm going to ruin this thing. But uh, it was fine. Let me show you how we change this now. So, um, boom, 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 boom. this, oop, oh, right there. Just has a thumb hold there. Simple as that. Pops right off. Let's find the medium. Medium. So I just took a Sharpie and wrote medium on there because they have numbers. You can kind of see it's not wrote real well. I can see that better. So we'll put this around. Just put it around the other belts. And then uh, this actually locks in. Let me show you. If you put this in and turn it, there, it locks in place. Then you can do this a little bit easier. Maybe. Come on. Get out of here. There we go. Can you just unlock it? Boom. Okay, so we want to make sure it's riding straight. Just a little bit over. Oh, too hard, too hard. There. Okay. And here we go. Same thing. Bit. Don't have as much of a burr over here. It feels sharp though, way sharp. This over here feels like a fluffy burr. They're a little bit shiny, so I'm rubbing up against there barely. That's probably all right. That'll get the angle about where you want it. If you're worried about it making any marks there, then you got to hold it up a little bit, but we're going to get some. If you're watching, see, flips the burr over. See that? It's like foil. Just barely doing it up there. I don't know if you can even see it on the camera. So, a couple more. Okay, we got it there. So now we'll go to the fine. There's fine. Fine is the called the X4 fine, which I uh, wrote down fine. Get her on there. Boom. That's good. We got it in the right area there. Okay, here we go again. So now that we're hitting the fine, the spoil is, I don't know, we'll, we'll, we'll see. Does it get bigger or smaller? <laughs>
still got a foil on there. That's all right, it's getting smaller. That's what happened with me last time too. I was really worried about that. See, it's got a big old foil on there. But as I went down, it got smaller and smaller and it feels squishy. It's like, oh, there's no way that's gonna sharpen or, you know, <laughs> cut anything. And But it took it right off and was crazy sharp. Well, there, it'll just peel right off. Okay, extra fine, 12,000 grit. See how shady that edge is? Still has a foil on there, but it's smaller. Uh, I notice this. It's not real straight. Not sure what to do about that. I didn't have that problem with the other one. Could be the nature of the Damascus steel. But anyway, we'll change it to the final belt. And hopefully that baby will be sharp, right? So, now we're doing the leather one. You, I'll show you. This one's tight, man. This one's really tight. It barely fits in there. Okay. So... I got it the wrong way. It goes that way. I want that seam where the bump is kind of riding on the smooth side. Okay, let's try that. Sorry. Get 
close your fan. This is nice and shiny. Pretty consistent. Burr is gone. Okay, now I'm going to adjust the camera and we'll do the uh, actual leather strop. Okay, so um, when I bought my other um, straight edge razor and they sent me this, I'd like to make a better one, but it's not, it's not bad. It doesn't have any flaws in it. Not quite wide enough, could be a little bit better leather, but, but it's all right. So you wanna pull it to, towards you Towards you now don't go towards the blade or uh, yeah tor don't push it towards the blade or you'll cut into the leather I'm going to drag it and and flip it over on the spine and back because if you go the other way and you bump it all it takes is bumping that edge a little bit and and you'll cut your strap and round your edge so you want to go like this and super light pressure I kind of tend to go a little bit slower than a lot of guys because because I'm not very good at this. So it's better to go slower and do it right than fast and screw up your blade. And some guys just whip this right out. I'll get there. I haven't been using this leather strop much, so I'll get better. Just lay it down in there and drag it, drag it, drag it, drag it. And you got to do it like a gazillion times, maybe more. And this is really what you need to do after every shave or before every shave, whichever you prefer. Just use this to uh, kind of touch it up. Keep it sharp, and once in a while you'll have to use the wet stone or, or maybe you know, just the leather strop on the work sharp, and touch it up, rehone it a little bit. But it won't take, be nearly as hard to keep it sharp once we've got the edge right. It'd be like keeping any knife sharp, you know. You just touch it up once in a while to keep it right. Then it's easy. It's just this initial time that takes the work. I'm not even counting. Now you got to do this like a hundred times, I think. It's from the videos I've seen, they what they recommend like a hundred. I don't know where I'm at. But anyway, you get the idea. Ooh, see how that feels wicked sharp now. The front here needs a little bit more work. The middle and the back is really sharp. Now that's crazy sharp. Should we do the stupid vapor test? Oh yeah. Now it's dull, right? <laughs> now I feel alright. Do the hair test. Let's see. Come on. There we go. There we go. There we go, we got a little bald spot there. So they say mid hair. I never tried that. Let's see if it does mid hair. No, nope, doesn't quite do mid hair. So I got a little more work to do. I'll work on it some more, but that is sharp enough to shave with now. We can get it sharper just by. <laughs> just whoa. We get it sharper just by um, the leather strop now. That made an amazing difference. We got the edge pretty close with the work sharp, touched it up on the leather strap strop, and, um, and we shave with it. So that's a good way to get started. Maybe uh, you can touch, try the whetstones after this point. See how you like that. Um, 
but this will get you a basic edge to work with so that it's at the right angle, the correct angle, where and sharp enough to shave with, and you can get it wicked sharp from here, and no doubt even better with a little bit of practice, a little bit of work, and uh, we'll get there. Thanks for watching. Give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel if you're not already, and uh, love you guys. Wait, 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 don't go. We gotta tie it out. So this will be quick, I'll just do this one side. But I wanted to uh, let you know also, these blades I'll um, put a link, if I can find them on Amazon, to which ones I got. But do your homework, there's a lot of different styles out there. These are, I think, pretty pretty basic, good starter size blades. Um, they work well for me anyway. And I, I'm not sponsored by anybody, so. And the shaving kit I got, I don't know how to pronounce it, A-N-B-B-A-S. Anbus. Um, there's a lot of them though. Just, you know, if you go to Amazon and type in Badger Hairbrush, it'll come up with all kinds of different options. And uh, a friend of mine named Jason did recommend that you get the Badger Hairbrush, the real Brad Badger Hairbrush, not a synthetic one. He got a synthetic one and it didn't work very well. So you know, he's trying to be environmentally friendly and I get it, but sometimes you need the real deal. Sometimes synthetic works fine for certain things. Um, anyway, so we'll get started and let's see if this thing works. I think it'll work fine. Oh, the growth, so I don't have as much growth as yesterday as when I shaved yesterday. This is only one day growth, not like two. But um, I think you can see it there, right? So we'll just do this side. And all I've done off video is went over it with the belt strap, the belt strap, strap about 50 more times, 100 more times. I don't know, I just kept going over it. And, uh, you know, I concentrated on making sure I got the whole blade nice and polished, not just uh, mid to the top, which is how it was. So here we go. Mmm, I like it. Needs to be gone over again, but it took it down to the skin pretty well. Uh, you can see it's a little thick back there still, so. But that was smoother. That was a lot smoother than my my other stainless steel one, honestly. I think this one seems to sharpen up a little better. And it's a thinner blade. The blade is a thinner diameter. Which should make a difference. And it feels really good. It's a lot smoother feel. I'm not going to get the razor burn so bad with this one. Don't do that. There, that's pretty good. Took it right off. Perfect. Thank you very much. Like and share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And uh, thank you very much for watching. I hope this video helps. Bye.